Hello, my name is Vladimir and I'm from Tampa University. I am going to present our work called Multimodal Dense Video Captioning. This is a joint work with S. Arahtu. Video understanding is a challenging and essential task in computer vision. It has a broad range of applications such as content-based retrieval and recommendation, autonomous driving, surveillance, software for the devices for visually impaired people which would allow them to understand the media content better. There are plenty of approaches to tackle video understanding, for example, action recognition, content summarization, action anticipation, video question answering, and video captioning, and many other tasks, of course. In this work, we are going to focus on video captioning. The task of video captioning requires a model to generate one sentence or one paragraph description of the video content. However, it's difficult to think up one sentence which might thoroughly describe a 19-minute movie. To this end, it was proposed to first localize the events on the video and then to generate a caption for each of the events. This problem is called dense video captioning. Let's step back a bit and think how a healthy human perceives video content. Typically, they employ information from several modalities into consideration. Specifically, we are using our eyes to see the visual content and ears to hear the audio. For example, this video clip. Since the person is wearing a hat and huge sunglasses, it might be quite challenging to guess that this is a lady, especially for a computer vision model. However, when we hear the audio, we might guess that this is likely a lady. Snowboarding for young kids, especially the under sixes, has become very accessible in recent years. Moreover, a video often contains a dialogue. Sometimes the dialogue is not clear or the person is not proficient in a foreign language to comprehend the conveyed idea. To address this, the person might turn on subtitles. Therefore, it is natural to assume that a video understanding approach might benefit from utilizing multiple modalities. Yet the majority of work on dense video captioning uses only visual features, ignoring the other two. To this end, we propose a multimodal dense video captioning module. The model inputs the features from audio, visual, and speech modalities, as well as the previous sequence of caption words. It processes the inputs into corresponding encoder-decoder blocks. All three outputs are then fused in the multimodal generator which models the distribution for the next caption word. Note that our model is not limited to three modalities and can handle any number of them. As an encoder-decoder architecture, we select the transformer because it's not recurrent and therefore efficiently scalable and can catch long-term dependencies. It was initially proposed for machine translation. We will briefly describe the concept of feature transformer for the visual sequence. The features from visual frames are extracted using the pre-trained i3D model. These features are then passed to the transformer encoder. The encoder is a stack of L encoder layers. Each layer in the stack consists of two sublayers. In particular, the first layer is a self-multi-headed attention, which attends to all positions in the input sequence for every feature in the sequence. The second layer is the position-wise fully connected network. Practically, it has two fully connected layers that are applied to every position in the input sequence. In the first layer of this fully connected network, the inputs are mapped to a higher dimension and squeezed back in the second layer. The position-wise network has the same set of weights when applied to each position. The encoder outputs a set of features where at each position a feature is attended to all other, other positions. The output of the encoder as well as the previous sequence of caption words are passed through the transformer decoder. Similar to the encoder, the decoder consists of L decoder layers. Opposed to the encoder, the decoder has an additional sublayer, namely encoder decoder attention. This sublayer is mostly similar to the self attention blocks where queries, keys, and values are the same. However, in the encoder decoder attention, the keys and values are taken from the encoder output. This encourages the recorder to attend not only to the previous sequence of caption words, but also to the sequence of input features. The other two sublayers are similar to the ones that are used in the encoder. Therefore, the decoder outputs the feature, which attends not only to the sequence of previous caption words, but also to all positions of the encoder output. 
Similar to the original architecture, we employ layer normalization and residual connection in each sublayer. Also, we add positional encoding vectors to the input features since the attention blocks are permutation invariant and have no sense of order within a sequence. In the case of other modalities, the feature embedding layer changes accordingly. More precisely, for audio modality, we employ the pre-trained vgg network, while for words from the speech modality, we train the text embedding similar to the ones which are used for the caption words. Since for the dense video captioning task, the events should be localized, we employ the predictions of the bidirectional single stream temporal action proposals network, as it's shown to achieve decent performance. In particular, BSST inputs a stack of C3D features. To account for the visual context, NLSTM makes a forward pass and encodes the video content from the past. During the forward pass, every position of the input sequence is treated as an ending point for a proposal. During the backward pass, NLSTM encodes the input features in a reversed order and regards the feature positions as starting points of a proposal. At each position in forward and backward passes, it predicts confidences for each of the 128 anchors. The final set of proposals is obtained by multiplying confidence scores of every pair of anchors and selecting the best one out of them. We use ActivityNet captions for our experimentations. It is based on human activity recognition dataset called ActivityNet. ActivityNet caption contains 10,000 videos in the training set and 5,000 in the validation set. Each video in the validation set is annotated twice by different annotators. On average, each video is two minutes long and have four temporary localized captions. The average length of a caption is around 14 words. The dataset is distributed as a set of links to YouTube and pre-extracted C3D features. The C3D features are based on a visual sequence alone and therefore are not suitable for our experiments. As time passes, some of the YouTube videos become unavailable. Specifically, we manage to download only 91% of all videos from the dataset. To extract the speech segments, we use automatic speech recognition tool provided by YouTube. We compare the performance of our model to the set of baselines on the validation dataset of activity net captions. We provide the performance on the full validation datasets, which might be unfair to our method as our model does not have any predictions for the missing videos and get zero scores on those. For a fair comparison, we also provide the results of our model on the videos where all three modalities are present. First, we compare our model on the capturing ground truth proposals. We observe that our model outperforms all listed methods on Blue 3 and 4, as well as Meteor. Furthermore, we compare our model with the others on the learned proposal setup. The table shows that our model performs competitively on Blue 3 and 4 metrics and outperforms all listed methods on Meteor. We highlight that our model achieves these results despite being trained on a smaller number of videos as they are no longer available for download. We run multiple ablation studies that consider different combinations of input modalities and fusion techniques. The reported results are evaluated against the full datasets without filtering it for missing data. We report the results in the following settings. The unimodal performance of audio and visual only models. The second setting is when the predictions of visual and audio only models are averaged. We observe that a simple averaging of predictions give a marginal improvement over the visual only model. The third setting is when the model's outputs are first concatenated and then two fully connected layers are used. In this case, we found that the performance improved significantly. Not that the number of parameters have also increased. To test if this improvement was due to additional modality or the increase in the number of parameters, we additionally report the performance of visual only model, which has a similar number of parameters as the audio visual model. We observe that the performance remains on the same level as the visual only model. Finally, we report the performance of the final model, which utilizes all three modalities as a reference to test if our model improves the performance in general, rather than in a specific video category. We additionally retrieve a category of each video from YouTube. The number of videos within each category is shown in brackets. 
The categories in which the number of videos is too small are removed from the analysis. We compare the performance of our model in three different settings, audio only, visual only, and when all three modalities are used in the model. The results imply a consistent gain within each category except for categories film and animation and travel and events. This might be explained by the lack of correspondence between visual and audio tracks. Specifically, a video from travel and events category might be accompanied by music. For example, a promotion of a resort. Also, film and animation category contains cartoon-like movies that might have a realistic soundtrack while the visual track can be goofy. Now we show the qualitative results. Please note that the subtitles are not the part of the visual content and other just for demonstration purposes. Snowboarding for young kids, especially the under sixes, has become very accessible in recent years. The predictions of the visual only model incorrectly imply that the speaker is a man, while the prediction of the model, which considers the audio modality, guesses it correctly. Now let's watch another part of the video. Teaching little kids is super fun, with learning hidden in games and no direct technical teaching at all. Keeping things moving on, interesting and fun is what it's all about. Modern kids' snowboard equipment has come on leaps and bounds, with soft flexi boards, comfy boots and simple one-strap bindings. These little things make all the difference. Freestyle skills can be introduced very early on. Our model predicts that a woman is speaking to the camera while the visual sequence doesn't contain it. We might understand why the model makes this mistake. If we take a look at the predictions of the audio-only model, we will notice that this signal comes from the audio modality. In our implementation, the vocabulary size of caption words is approximately 10,000 words, and for speech segments it is 23,000. The features for audio and visual modalities are pre-extracted before training. The feature transformers have the following dimensions. 512 for speech, 128 for audio, and 1024 for visual modality. This corresponds to the dimensions of the respective input features. Similar to the original transformer architecture, we employ the attention with multiple heads. We found that four heads perform optimally in our experiments. Our final model has one encoder and decoder layer. All three feature transformers are trained jointly using the KL divergence loss with the label smoothing. Adam optimizer was used with a constant learning rate. To regularize our model, we employ a mild dropout. The hyperparameters were manually tuned using Meteor metric on the validation set. The training batch size is 28 video clips. In total, our model has approximately 179 million parameters and trained for 30 epochs on one consumer type GPU for approximately 15 hours. In this work, we proposed a multimodal dense video capturing module and showed how dense video capturing might benefit from other modalities, namely audio and speech. The code for PyTorch implementation of the model and the project page is publicly available. Also check out our personal web pages to see the latest work on the topic. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions.